that's enough, John. Don't stare too long. Girls are starting to talk. Better be smart Don't think too hard Just revise what you are Even if you break Do what it takes Now go and make us proud That's enough, John Don't carry on Don't you love us at all Find it in your heart to Play the part Now shut your mouth
that's enough, John. Don't stare too long. Girls are starting to talk. Totally Tell Me, a weekly entertainment review podcast where we talk about movies, music, food, and fun. My name is Dominic Mercurio, and I'm here with Laura Weinbach. Hello. Up, Hello. Hello. What's up? What's up with you? You know, just doing a podcast as, as per usual. <laughs> and our special guest today, the man, the, the, the myth, the legend, <laughs> there he is cracking up, and it is Kramis. How's it going? Hey, I'm, it's good. How are you? Thanks for having me. <laughs> thanks for being here we're we're thrilled to have you um, thank you <laughs> if you don't know kramis kramis is a musician he's based in Asheville, north carolina um we <laughs> as fox Hills brigade did a uh, a split seven inch with him um yeah that was uh fall of last year was that or i think it was december right december. last year 2000 yeah because okay, yeah. i heard i heard the song that you i saw a video of laura singing and the song was so beautiful. I, I think that's when I started bugging you. Wait, you sorry. And... <laughs> I started saying. You heard remember? what song with who's Anton? Anton wasn't singing. With you, him. with you. Oh, but he wasn't you were... singing. No, no, it was just you. <laughs> I think it was you on a porch. I, I think Laura. Oh, oh, sorry. I think Laura's right. busy ordering food right now. She's no, I wasn't. Loop, I, <laughs> I'm not ordering food. I was trying to get the live stream to go. Forget it. <laughs> I don't even remember now. <laughs> well, look, uh, um, I'm sharing was... the live stream with our friends and family. <laughs> oh, that's a beautiful thing. <laughs> See, isn't that better than ordering food? <laughs> yeah. Slightly. Okay, Slightly go so. on. Um, but totally tell me, totally tell me for those uh, <laughs> watching and or listening is a biweekly uh, podcast and live stream where we uh, go live every two weeks on YouTube. Facebook and Twitch. Um, we're currently live, but you might be listening on podcast streams afterwards. But if you'd like to watch us live, uh, our our episodes are every two weeks. So our next episode will be January third, um, seven p.m. as as we are live seven p.m. here at a, at a, another Sunday Eve. Um, Ten p.m. for Kramis though. Where he oh, yes, okay, true. so get this. Yeah. So uh, this is probably the latest I ever stayed up since April. No. So my wife. <laughs> oh my totally god! Saying, I'm so sorry. Listen, no, listen. So my I, wife is like, "You're gonna, you're gonna. Can we swear on this?" Yes. Yeah. You can. Uh, okay. You can she's swear, like, "You're gonna fucking, pray. you're gonna fucking fall asleep." She's from Jersey, so she's, she's like, "You're gonna fucking fall asleep." And I'm you're like, "Okay." She goes, asleep. "She goes, get, meet me in the car. I'm gonna drive you around, look at Christmas lights, like a kid. Like she's like, does it get me outside like an hour before?" An hour before, and I go so that you wouldn't fall asleep. So I won't fall asleep during. <laughs> during, <laughs> during trying to just like give you so a lot I of made, stimulus. Then, I said I'm gonna make hot chocolate. She goes, "Oh, fucking great! Now you're never gonna sleep." <laughs> <laughs> like like the little bit of caffeine that's in. Yeah, totally. Do, do you drink much I'll be in, I, Except you that know, that's I, like an, a triple XL cho- chocolate mug, as we've established I mean, I can't earlier. Keep my or hands, is so. it? <laughs> Yeah, no, it's like show them how big the mug is. Show them how big the mug is. First, show the mug. That that look. Wait, hold it up. Wait, no, don't do that yet. Hold it up to. Hold on, just hold it. Hold it up to. (laughs) Hold the mug up to the camera, just as a mug. Okay, like hold it closer. Does it look like I'm just? Wait, no, no, hold it. That looks normal, but hold it like. Look at how big that is. Is that not big? Yeah, now, actually, could you dunk your face? Actually, like, dunk your face into it. Now, you know I mean? now bring your face closer yes, to it. Yes. Okay. Wow. It's it's not looking quite as big as it did earlier, but now I'm, show us I'm how hot flashes. How show, show us how actually big the mug is with your hand. But my hand, my hand is three times the size of a like a like a bear. Like a, <laughs> don't don't tell us that yet. Let's just see the, the mug. 
look at how little the mug suddenly is now. Actually, you know, that little, is true. That is true. It's a little it is, miniature. It's but like, it's not. It's a teacup. There's, I have his to hand the actual mug. <laughs> no, that is an actual mug. No, like so a real mug is like that thing. Do you, do you have <laughs> so a banana? So that is a triple XL mug. This is, li- this is my mug shot. Oh, that's so cheesy. <laughs> That was great. I loved oh, it. I, that was I really it. good. That was a really I'm well out. design. That it's was really well design. No, we go for high row here, so that's actually that's perfect. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, well, uh, look, oh, yeah. also one last thing I was going to mention before we kind of get into stuff is the track that you just heard is called uh, Hurry Up, John. It's uh, by Fox Hills Brigade, me and Laura's band. Uh, Mine we released was. that. What, excuse me? <laughs> I'll say You're whatever grammar I want. Your yeah, you tell the bathroom's it wrong. down your hall. The bathroom, the bathroom's down your hall, as I said. That screwdriver is taking over. <laughs> it is, yeah. I have been screwed. Um, yeah, Dominic has but, a screwdriver and an egg-shaped penis microphone to go for. So again. Sustained throughout the night. Show that the thing, people. <laughs> Look at that. The egg-shaped penis. Look at that. Imagine if that was your penis. It is. <laughs> it is my nude penis that I just showed upon. Dominic is live. Committing, Dominic is tonight's episode is an expose on Dominic's inner workings. This is the best his podcast ever. <laughs> well, I'm glad. I'm glad someone. Glad you realize so. that. <laughs> this is fun. Oh, but right. this is a nice. This is a nice segue to recognize that. Or to give a shout out to the Poundcast that had us on as guests this past week. The episode just aired. They also think our podcast is really good. So thank you. We appreciate it. Wait, wh- what? Who? What? Who what? Said this? Happened? The Poundcast. Oh, the Poundcast. You know, starring starring What's Brent the Weinba- It's a really funny podcast that um, is hosted by my brother Brent, who's a comedian, oh, yeah. and his friend uh, Doug Lusson Hop. I hope I said his last name right. They have a show called <laughs> Poundhouse. Uh, it's, a, it's a web series. It's really funny. And really weird it's and cool. awesome i got now check they have that a out. podcast and we were on the podcast this week and it was cool. a barrel of laughs and they <laughs> were shouting out our podcast because they recognize a good quality podcast when they see it <laughs> such as this and i just wanted to acknowledge such a thing as that well let's, I think let's that's also awesome. carry them let's, and let's, acknowledge uh... that Kramy, kramis is so <laughs> wise as to recognize such a thing as that as well well thank I you i do recognize it <laughs> <laughs> And we we'll need just, more we'll, people to recognize. We'll briefly in reverse okay. also mention that the Poundcast is a great podcast, and you should go listen to our guest As episode. If, if you just can't get enough of me and Laura, we were recently on, so you should go check them out. It's the one that just came out, um, I think, like a couple mm-hmm. days ago. So I think it's episode 226 or something like that. Um, but yeah, go, go check that out. Also, my brother is tuning in. What's up, mm-hmm. Alex? Oh, uh, what's up, brother? And, what's up, uh, a lot of love on this show. And he says, he, he's, he says, uh, Dom drinks like six glasses of coffee. Again, that's nothing. I guess in in um in reference to the size of your cup. <laughs> it is true, actually. Like if we're if we're talking mugs, I mean this is my coffee mug, <laughs> which is actually ginormous. That's See, that, actually, that's that's actually a bowl. Huge. No, that's that the looks, cho- that's the chode version of Kram- That's the chode version of Kramis. <laughs> Kramis's version. <laughs> it is. It's, it's a bowl. Really- like you have to hold it like this. <laughs> You have to hold it with your middle finger going through the hole. That's how you do it. <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> That's your index finger. But you I just know, this is my middle wanna... finger. Excuse oh, me? Oh, I thought that was your thumb on top. Excuse me. Excuse Here's the big reveal. One more thing? Oh, my God. That is so intense. This is a pen. This is a normal size pen. <laughs> Okay, and that's, that's the good. cup. Oh, that's wow. good. That is tiny. Well, so we can actually <laughs> we can do a similar sort Wait, of ratio. Tom Dominic, do we have the same pen? This is crazy. <laughs> similar, very similar pen. You actually really might. You're uh, you must be a pen connoisseur. <laughs> I saw that pen and or I both of you are through. not pen connoisseurs. <laughs> that's probably it. I had to sift through all ten of my pens to find the one that I knew was that exact one. That's awesome. I'm a pen connoisseur. <laughs> no joke. I'm not even joking. Are you? I'm I'm the same. No, I really I, love I really I do too. It's my favorite. One of the <laughs> one of the one of the Christmas presents I wished for this year, asked for, let people know that I wanted was a glass pen. 
I'll tell you that's why. crazy because every year I ask for a fancy pen. Like I always expect to get one that you dip in ink yeah. and you write with. Have you, know? you tried a glass one? The glass kind no. that you dip in ink? They're pretty awesome. No. There's a they, store they really here. Work. There's a store here that just sells mm -hmm. nothing but those pens. But like fountain pen or you mean like calligraphy Dipping. Yeah, oh, yeah. The dipping. Yeah. I know. Quills, as they call them. Quills. That's it. But, um, <laughs> that's it. No, the glass ones are really fun, though, because they just there's a, they they have a kind of design like on the tip of it that makes it so that the ink sort of just sort of sprouts from it in such a way that's really conducive for, um, you know, good writing. <laughs> I think well. that sounds <laughs> amazing. <It's fun. laughs> I know. I, I feel that one should have a fun, good pen to write with. I mean, otherwise, you're not going to want to write. No, and you have to have a good, fancy book to I write feel, lyrics in and mm. stuff. Yeah. Or just whatever. You yeah. could say the paper <laughs> is as important as the pen. <laughs> the paper. It is. Um, one, but is one the quick pen audience. as important as the sword? One must ask one. That's day. right. It's just some Game of Thrones <laughs> shit. No, it's not. It's an age-old saying. Age old, okay. Um, now, my, 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 my brother has given me an audio. An audio uh, <laughs> he says that I'm a little echoey. Can you guys let me know? Really? It, wait, wait. I'm going to do an AV. Like that to me. Oh, it sounds really, really good. Oh. I don't hear you echoing. Okay. Uh, well, know. let's just do a quick AB. Okay, here's uh, this has been A. This has been A. And then I'm just going to. Okay, now this is a B. This is a B. B. They sound identical. Identical. A. Go All right. back to A. Go back to A. A. This is A. Hello. Hello. A is punchy. I guess it's, it's punchy, real yeah. punchy. It's a little it has a little weird. attitude. Yeah. Okay. I think I'd rather have some attitude then. I think that... I'm gonna stick with A. <laughs> I like to. I like to assert myself. <laughs> That's it, then. I like to intimidate my guests. <laughs> <laughs> I feel very. Really... No I'm very nervous by your tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. For, for those who um, weren't part of the three people in this Zoom call, uh, prior to this episode, I was discussing how this is actually my nude body. Um, this is a, Dominic this is a nude. tattoo. I decided to go nude for this episode. So it's sort of like a, a flabby a of, tattoo that for, I got on my outer layer. It's like a foreskin. Well, he explained it is like a foreskin. <laughs> yes. That microphone has brought a lot. That egg-shaped penis and the foreskin. <laughs> Tattoo. <laughs> this is going well. It's going well. Honestly, this is this is this is, this is more than this I could is... ask for. <laughs> this is a Christmas gift. Oh, it's a yeah, holiday it's treat. Holidays. <laughs> it Did is you holidays. guys watch? Happy holidays, guys. Thank did you. you did you watch when you were kids? Did you watch all the Rankin and Bass or Rankin all the Christmas stuff, all the cartoons? Rudolph. Mm, some of them, I guess. You I, didn't? You guys weren't into that stuff? I kind of was. No, I liked other stuff. Like what? <laughs> well, I remember watching, like, The Adventures of Baron Munchauser when I was, you know, during Christmas kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And mm. also, you know, no, I guess I did watch well, oh, Charlie Brown, Charlie Brown Christmas. Oh, I love Charlie Brown. Um, and, well, Christmas Story, of course. Um, I mean, I grew up. I grew up in Cleveland by that house, by the did? Christmas story. Uh huh. Wow. Yeah. Whoa. Oh, I didn't even know it was a real house. It is, and you can cool. you can go there. Not now, you can't go there, but you can go there when it's not. You know where else you can go? <laughs> the pandemic. Where you can go to the Breaking Bad house too in New Mexico. We did. I didn't. I haven't tour. watched. You did. did? Yeah, we did that. <laughs> did I that. have not watched one of those, but I know what oh, it's really? all about. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'm really fun. bad. I'm oh, my so bad with. No, I've I'm never... jealous. I'm jealous that you haven't watched it because now you have a lot to look forward to. Really? Yeah, you, have, you have a bright future. I see. <laughs> My great dad things. keeps telling me to watch it. Really? It's I've never so even fun. seen Pulp Fiction. I've never seen. Oh, oh hello. You guys, I just saw Breakfast Club maybe a year ago for the first time in Sixteen Candles. Wow. wow. I am the wow. worst guest. Wait, no, 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 no. No, we want people this who like you know. I, did you we watch don't want like some... Ferris Bueller's Day Off? Have you watched Ferris Bueller's Day Off? I did watch that one too. Oh, okay. Like. Oh, Three years ago, yeah, but I never. What about I was Pretty always, in Pink? I just saw that like Actually, a year or two I ago. <clears throat> I oh I saw God. those as oh. an adult. You haven't seen it? That I have not seen. I haven't seen Pretty Dominic in Pink. Dominic is not a child of the eighties, though. 
Oh, that's right. What <laughs> is you, Well, technically, I was born in the 80s. I'm of the 80s, but I'm not a child of the 80s. I was a what I was year an were infant you born? of the 80s. Uh, 89. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was well, born in 92. <laughs> <laughs> you were born what? in 92? Is that what you said? No, I said 82. 82. Oh, you're like, <laughs> you're trying to retract your statement about being from the 80s. I am literally, <laughs> I could be your uncles. Because I was born in... <laughs> I was born in 74. Oh, that's cool. I know, I mean, I know a, cool a guy, I so knew I a guy saw... who was born in 74. <laughs> <laughs> Here he is. That sounds like, that's... <laughs> that that sounds... sounds like the beginning of everything. <laughs> yeah. It sounds like it's a myth that you once heard that someone <laughs> totally. had been born in 1974. I once heard a guy who was born in 74. He came to my You're house like... one night dressed in nothing but a Christmas hat and sneakers. <laughs> that was... His penis was the shape of an egg. It was extremely please, mysterious. A please don't stop. If you will. <laughs> please keep going. I I could literally drink the rest of this to that story. He simply shoved himself down my chimney. He said, "Ho ho ho!" Left the bag he of simply, sparkles he and simply, took the hell off. He got on his magic carpet himself. and got the fuck out of there. That was the best part of my day. He said, so. "I'm born in 1974." <laughs> his parting words. Got, wow. Gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> that was so oh, funny. <laughs> uh, you know. Christmas, you mentioned you mentioned Christmas cartoons, which is kind of like an odd thing because I just sent oh, yeah. I just sent um, Laura this. I, I had never seen it actually before a couple days ago, but um, a friend of mine posted uh, this song from this short from the seventies called. The Snowman. Are you familiar with that one? Oh, oh my God! Oh, walking, walking in the air. Was it the song when Bowie comes out and like talks oh. to the kid and then goes into walking in the air? Have you seen the clip with Bowie in it? I heard that he's a part of it, but I haven't seen that yet. I, I, I've yet to go back and rewatch it is, the whole thing. It's my third. Is that the song "Walking in the Air"? No, the one that I fell in love with. But now I'm excited to just hear them all. Uh, but mm -hmm. the one I fell in love with was when the snowman like takes him up into the air and he's like. We're flying through the air. That's walking in the air. <laughs> That's the tune. Is that I it? literally would. I almost would pay for you to talk in falsetto the rest of the God, show. God, it's so. That was, that I was, was awesome. like. That was better than mine. <laughs> the tune is so cool. Like, I was just like, yeah. oh my God, this melody is awesome. And then, and not only that, but the animation is really cool too. And now it's I want to like, watch the whole thing because I'd never even heard of this. I mean, it's. No, it, this, walking. Walk, that's yeah, my, one of my favorite songs of all really? time. Wow. Yeah, it always always has been. Really? That and um, Dance of the Sugar Plum Fairy. Oh, oh yeah. Those two things. Name, yeah. When I was a little kid, I went to the first thing I ever went to. I think I was four years old, and it was the Nutcracker. And I remember standing there with my mom <clears throat> and whoever else was there. But I was staying there as a little kid, and I when that... Um, Dun, 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 started i literally passed out as a four-year-old i was just like i'm done wait I was done. you like, literally pat like you actually i was truly... so excited that i had an <laughs> asthma attack and i was like done i just fainted i honestly can't tell if you're if you you could no, be lying i didn't confirm. literally i didn't literally pass Damn out it. but i was so excited <laughs> i was so excited over that, and that was my first you memory. You passed out. <laughs> uh, that was my first memory of being excited by music. That yeah, was the, awesome. wow. that song, yeah. But that song that you're talking about the, in The Snowman, that whole thing, that's just amazing. Well, I haven't seen that whole cartoon, but I watched that clip. I like the song a lot, but the cartoon looks really awesome. Yeah. It the is, The whole movie yeah. looks really cool. Yeah, yeah. definitely. I, also just, I think I'm also just a sucker for, like, a little boy singing voice, you know? Mm -hmm. There's something about that that's like... I thought you were going to be like, I think I'm just a sucker for like a little boy. When I see little boys. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is not the Michael Jackson <laughs> podcast. Oh, oh my God. Oh. oh. <laughs> dropping, some, dropping some truth up in here. Dropping some <laughs> bombs up in here. Holy crap. Oh, poor Michael. <laughs> oh, yeah. But poor Michael, I don't know. Hey, he rest in peace. <laughs> I don't know. Um, <laughs> why? I'm sweating. <laughs> yeah, this is how we exercise. 
This is the only <laughs> exercise I get these days. I just we do one podcast every two weeks and strips down naked as you can see as it is right now. <laughs> Strip down naked. Yeah. Does, oh, this does extra... his virtual run. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, <laughs> it's 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 as easy as that to break a sweat in twenty twenty. I I can't laugh anymore. <laughs> My face hurts. It would be hilarious if you like if you truly just had, just had like a dead stop in your laughter for the rest of the show. Like for the rest of the show, you're just like sad. I can try, but I might explode. I swear, I swear that my laugh has gotten me more attention because, like, if I'm like, uh, people just try to get. I laugh so. Uh, it's like a witch cackle. I don't know what it is. It's like an asthmatic witch cackle, and like, mm-hmm. I um, people be like, hey, I uh. I don't know if you remember me from like seventh grade in study hall, but your laugh was so infectious. And I'd be like, yeah, I don't even know who you are, but that's all they remember me for is my laugh. Mm. <laughs> More than music <laughs> or passing out as a four year old at the nutcracker. <laughs> the laugh. <laughs> mm. It's infectious. I that's like cool. it too. What is infectious? Infectious. I feel like people told me a similar thing. But a, it was my laugh and also my deep voice because they were like, I just remember even in like third grade, you had that deep voice. And I'm just like, <laughs> that would be so awesome. They're like, all these little kids were just like talking like, bah, 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 and then Dominic comes over. He's like, bah. <laughs> oh, mommy. that's awesome, dude. <laughs> is, your, so, oh, wait, is your laugh like, <laughs> is like that that yeah, I like, don't know. I mean. <laughs> I'm trying to picture your laugh right now. Wait, I mean, laugh? I mean, you've heard me laugh. <laughs> Count the cycles for a podcast. I, know, I mean, but... tell me a joke. Tell me a joke and perhaps you'll get a laugh. That's I have be a funny, joke. though. Okay. You want to hear my it. dad's favorite joke? My dad said, uh, oh, you went. I got it. I got one. Okay. After you, after you go you, first. No, you... no, you go first. You go first. <laughs> What's funny is this is my dad's favorite joke. So he tells everyone, like two or three times, is he goes, I went to the doctors to get my uh, prostate checked. And I said, doctor, where should I? take my pants off and where should I put my pants? He doctor goes next to mine. That's the whole joke. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. That's whoa. Like all back to our episode. Of- that's my that. that's how I've always laughed. <laughs> all right, here's my bad joke. All right. Uh, <laughs> oh, there you go. Oh, that shit, you're that right. You got, that you, got that you got a genuine. You got a genuine. You got a genuine. That was it. I guess I don't need to tell my bad joke. <sighs> no, tell oh, but we all want to hear oh, it. Fine. Why yeah. did the chicken cross the road? Why? Because his penis was shaped like an egg. <laughs> oh, <God>. <laughs> <laughs> it does not deserve it. But thank you. I'll take it. Oh. <laughs> Wow. It it's was so not... spontaneous. <laughs> <laughs> the comedy club erupts in laughter. Um, oh, shit. Just that spontaneous type, aren't I? All right. Um... <laughs> yeah. Um, actually, I wanted to uh, ma- perhaps Let's... we can move on to talking about uh, some of the stuff we've been watching lately. We could. Um, or what, Laura? Did you have yeah, to... no, let's do that. All right, <laughs> right cool. Great idea. Um, <laughs> Keep going. Yeah, Kramus, uh, what have you, what have you, uh, what have you been watching lately? Honestly, I, I know that there was a movie I watched last week, but I cannot remember it. And I asked my wife, and she can't remember it either. But we both said it was good, and I can't remember it. But <laughs> <That's fine. laughs> really, I just, I, I, we watched. All of Shit's Creek, and mm-hmm. popular basically, show. yeah, it is, and it's it's really funny. And we watched. Um, I don't know. We've been so busy, but I um, I'm what? hooked on those, the Curse of Oak Island, and I know everyone's gonna make fun of me about that. But have I you watched that? I don't know what it is. They are yeah. they're in. It's a it's a reality series, and they're digging for old <laughs> old treasure in Canada on Oak Island in Nova oh. Scotia. Oh, oh, it's a reality show. Yeah, oh. it's it's like that. That's all I've been watching. Really, really. Appa- yeah. Apparently, my brother knows Curse of Oak Island. He is. That's commented. awesome. Curse of Oak Island is a myth. I don't know. Where, it? where are you seeing these comments? 
Uh, I think he's watching yeah. on Twitch. It's coming through Twitch. Oh, gotcha. <clears throat> what is... Okay, yeah. So that show I'm obsessed with. And even though... Even though they find, like, little bits of things, like, maybe they, they'll find, like, a, a coin from, like, the Crusades or, like, a, wow. something like that. Like, to me, that's treasure. But to everybody else, they're like, this is fucking bullshit. They just keep digging holes. A coin holes. from the Crusades? That sounds like it'd be I, really that's, valuable. That's, like, what, yeah. Or, like, <laughs> Spanish galleon and all this stuff. And, like, oh God, that's I'm just hooked on treasure. I'm like a pirate in <laughs> real life. <laughs> real <laughs> real life. I can see it. I can see the eye patch. I think it no, was. I totally, yeah. yeah. Pirates. That sounds right. like don't what about you guys? About their um, I wanted to ahead, ask you ahead. about uh, Queen's Gambit because it sounds like something oh, yeah. that we've all watched. I mean, I'm actually in the middle of it, and so we won't talk any spoilers for if anyone hasn't seen it. Um, but yeah, I started that recently, uh, Queen's Gambit, on your recommendation, Laura, last episode. Oh. Oh, okay. Um and yeah, I'm, I'm, I want to say I think I'm four episodes or maybe five episodes in. I'm somewhere in the middle. Um, but I'm really enjoying fun? it. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's beautifully shot. I was going to say, um, if for nothing else, great mise-en-scene. I mean, yeah, the, the production design is really incredible. Yeah, um, yeah. it's like pretty high, high budge looking. <laughs> I like definitely. it a lot too, yeah. I definitely um, like it. And, yeah, and her like, house well, is so cool. <laughs> it's just, yeah, it's just got a lot of really good... It is cool, and I mean, it just the the attention to detail is like pretty obvious. I mean, yeah, you know, there's a lot of period pieces out there, but like this one is just really well executed. I feel like in terms mm-hmm. of yeah. yeah. And for those who haven't heard of it, it's, it's it's about a an, an orf or it's a it's about a young girl who loses her parents and she becomes an orphan. She grows up in an orphanage, um, and then she kind of starts to get obsessed with the game of chess. And it kind of just goes from there. She, that's like becomes her one big passion and in, uh, in life. Obsession. And, and uh, so yeah, oh, I think sorry. it's kind of. I will about say that actually, yeah, okay. your mic does seem a little loud. Actually, no, a little loud. Okay. Yeah, yeah sorry. <laughs> just a little. Just a yeah. penny. I, just I a think it's actually. Away. Yeah, I think. What the hell is going on here? All right, I think that should be better for our listeners. It might not be better for you, but I'm mixing oh, it okay. through. Oh, okay, OBS. got it. Okay. But I'll turn okay. it down for a little. Yeah. Fair enough. It might it might still sound loud to, to you though. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> um, yeah. What do you think of it though, Laura? I mean, I liked it. I mean, it's fun. It's a fun little you know little flick. Not I mean yeah. not flick as they say, but I mean it's like you know it is it is it's definitely something to get addicted to that you know you can you know just kind of kick back and get into for a few few nights straight. Um, but I think so too. Yeah. You know, it's not like my favorite thing ever, but I think it's pretty good. You know. There was a lot of controversy about the uh, her char- the the friend the her orphanage friend character. That mm. I'm about. Oh really? Yeah. Why? Well, I that on the surface <coughs> level, I thought they had a nice relationship, but uh, I think yeah. that it was seen by like the African American community as perpetuating this sort of magical black friend character. That oh was yeah. Really only like mm-hmm. her role in the show was really only to serve like her white friend. <laughs> And like be mm. her, there to help her in her time of need, and that was it. Like mm-hmm. she didn't really have much of another, like any other. They didn't go into her, her story at all. And I will say that it was interesting. Like, oh wait, shit, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm uh, giving away some. Am I spoiling stuff for you? No, Sorry, no. I didn't mean to. I don't I don't think you were saying anything that was a spoiler. <laughs> okay, mm. good. Well, then I I won't say any more. Yeah, because yeah. I might have been about to. But, but I will say, and this isn't really a spoiler either. I I had some a lot of sympathy for her though. Just you know where the, her friend, the, the character of the friend. Yeah, I mean, just the the bits and pieces that she was given us about who she was. I mean, I, I was like, well, I mean is... that you might have sympathy for her, but they weren't. I think that the 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 perspective on why people are like you know not down. Yeah, I'm not saying I necessarily. I mean, I see the point, but I mean, I also I liked thought her character was fine also but at the same time i can i guess i could see why it's basically just perpetuating a stereotype of the black figure in a very in like a predominantly white you know storyline and basically serving the same role that has been perpetuated for a year like you know decades Mm -hmm. and basically like even though her her character is sympathetic it's, it's like not seen as progressive or strong like it's not really seen as breaking that mold that's been kind of designated to that kind of character. I don't know. Whatever. I can understand I that. I see that. Yeah. I, I mean, so yeah, I, 
I agree. Yeah. But that's that's right up to where I got to, like on that whole thing, like right when she got to the her new home, like she got. Oh, with her wait, the new Dominic? mother. Oh wait, has Dominic <laughs> oh, no. the new mother? Um, oh, wait. Yeah, I have, but we have shouldn't you? say oh, okay. anymore. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, all right. There's a fine oh. line. Oh, that's how far you are too, Kranos? Yeah, that's where I'm at too. Yeah. I am okay. a little I, further than that, but not much. <laughs> but I heard it gets amazing. Well, yeah, Anton really liked it a lot. Yeah. I'll say that. Um, Laura, what else have you been watching? What have I been watching? Well, I could go down a little memory lane over here. <laughs> Um, uh, real quick, I'll just let you know a couple things. Um, watched, uh, revisited Home Alone's one and two. Nice. Great, great. <clears throat> Home Alone one is just so freaking good. It's just a well mastered, well directed, well cast piece of fun filled action packed family, you know, fun right. Christmas <laughs> movie. Mm-hmm. And Home Alone 2 is not as good. (laughs) Even though I enjoyed Home Alone 2 when I was a kid, I just, Home Alone 1 is like, it's just so good. There's so many fun details in it to like be aware of. Like once I, having rewatched it now with my more mature eyes, I notice a lot of fun details in the like, in the mise-en-scene art direction and like interesting things that are kind of glossed over in the very beginning of the movie that are actually really important details that actually get used in a very, you know, front and center kind of way later on in the movie, which is kind of fun because it was like they were basically really planning out through the art direction and like the decor how they were going to um, create this crazy fun house for, you know, the wet bandits to <laughs> engage with. Mm-hmm. So like and also just the whole element of like Joe Pesci and this Daniel Stern character being these like slapstick cartoon characters. Yeah, it's actually hilarious. I mean, yeah. I never even really thought I would like slapstick humor as much as I do. I mean, I do like some slapstick humor when it's done well, but like, it's so funny the minute they start doing that whole last act. You know, the whole third act of like when Joe Pesci shows up and he like falls down the stairs and slides and just falls on his back and he's like, ah, <laughs> and he just like starts. <laughs> It's just hilarious. It's absolutely yeah. what is, hilarious. Because it's like we're talking about Joe Pesci, who plays like the most hardcore gangster of them all. Right. And totally. like Goodfellas. And then yeah. he's in this movie as this like lovable, you know, crook who they never say any bad words. It's really funny. Like they, mm-hmm. after after Kevin is like, you know, smashes Daniel Stern in the face with a freaking scalding hot iron, blow torches Joe Pesci's head and they like never makes swear. him he like brands his hand with the McAllister family like freaking doorknob he never calls him like a little bastard or like a little shit or anything like that he's just like I'm gonna get you you little (laughs) (laughs) that's exactly what it's just so funny what's the premise of two what's the second one they're in lost in New York he basically like misses his plane and like he ends up going to new york where the rest of his family goes to florida or no oh yeah no yeah they go to florida and the first one they go to paris and like it's just hilarious but yeah anyway great movie i recommend a revisit if you haven't seen home alone one in a while it's just a lot of fun i also rewatched another favorite of mine this is these are later favorites i mean i like a lot of movies from earlier on but uh, 1990 version of The Witches, directed by Nicholas Rogue. Rogue, starring. Oh my Adele God, that Houston. sounds good. It is freaking great. Loved it. So well directed. So well shot. Angelica Houston is freaking brilliant, and she's not just brilliant; she's mm-hmm. hilarious. Like, yeah. As the grand, have, have you seen it, Dominic? Um, yeah. 1990s version of The Witch. Yeah, I mean, okay. I haven't seen. I mean, the new I one, forgot. But how funny angelica houston when she becomes the grand high witch she's like a sexual witch she's like <laughs> in the, when they like when they're like in the they're in this kind of ballroom type thing scene where they're doing the like conference with all the witches like in england or whatever she becomes the witch she like takes off her face and she goes i have your chocolate here <laughs> and she's like she's like <laughs> moving in these sexual ways and she like she says, I'm going to invite Bruno in. And, and she like invites this kid in. She's like, in five seconds time, he will become a mouse. And she starts counting. Oh, it's goes, the one with the mouses. Yeah, and she goes, she yeah. goes five. And as she's counting down, she goes, five, four. And she's like, hump, she's like humping the air. She's like, five, four, three, two. Instant extermination. 
Spanish, and then she's like <laughs> pumping the the air. It's oh, like, how did she shit. come up with these moves? Like, did the director tell her to do that, or was this all just the brilliance of Angelica Houston's creativity in her own character? I don't know. <laughs> it's amazing. It's just such a weird choice that she decided to deliver these lines in such a way. And um, it, is Jack Nicholson in that one? No, it doesn't really have too many. Well, Rowan Atkinson is in it. He's really funny. And um, God, what am I thinking of? Um. Oh, are you thinking of Wolf or the Wolf or something like that? Or uh, Witches of Eastwick. Witches of Eastwick. Thinking. That's it. Right. 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 Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Well, this movie is great. I recommend it. A great, fun watch. Really fun, warm, good decor. Really fun props and things like that. A lot of fun, uh, practical effects. Good makeup, etc. Also watched Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Actually, didn't finish it, but I'm watching it, and it's pretty good. Gotta Which say. one? There's like Can't. three versions. Oh. The 70s one? The 70s, one that came out okay. in the 70s? Yeah. Yeah. And then also watched last night, watched It's a Wonderful Life for the first time. Probably should have seen that oh, years ago, but. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. That's good. Yeah. Interesting movie. Did you know that uh, Jimmy Stewart, who that movie stars, that he was, you know, propositioned to like do all these propaganda videos like during World War II? Uh uh. Or before World War II or whatever. I don't know. And he, like, didn't want to do it. And then he enlisted in the Army. And he became, like, a... <clears throat> he enlisted himself in the in the United States Army and, like, went to war. <laughs> after you, after that movie? No, this was no, before the movie. The movie, yeah. He was, wow. Yeah, he was, like, still a star, you know? And, like, yeah. he, he went to war and he was, like, a, a plane fly... He, like, flew a plane and he... I don't know. Wow. People, I think. And then he wow. also... His plane was like shot at, and there was a, and his, basically it just barely missed him. Like his, his plane got shot at, and it got a hole in it next to where his feet were, I guess. And he basically wow. like suffered hardcore PTSD from that afterwards. But that's that an amazing story. Yeah, that totally yeah, is. Yeah, like he didn't have to, he didn't have to join the army, I don't think, at the time uh -uh. he wanted to fight. But he did. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And uh, after that, yeah, he did It's a Wonderful Life and everything was happily ever after. And it was That's amazing. Yeah. There on out. It was. <laughs> Have you seen It's a Wonderful Life, Dominic? Um, wait, is this from the 90s? <laughs> no, no, no. It's from like the 19, probably 50s, 50s. 40s, 50s. I mean, yeah. it was the movie from the 90s that like was winning Oscars and shit. <clears throat> I don't know. It's, a, it's like something like. Oh, it's a, oh be my, a beautiful, uh, beautiful life or beautiful. Oh, could be body you mean about the bodyguard the, no 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 are you talking about the one the roberto benini movie could be the one with uh, like about <laughs> about the holocaust and stuff? well i think the point is i haven't seen it's a wonderful okay. life <laughs> oh the one i i remember that movie too totally yeah. you guys are you're totally reminded of life is all beautiful? these movies life is beautiful life is beautiful Something that's like, it. Yeah. yeah yeah life is beautiful wow cannot, um, but I no i haven't right seen right it's now. wonderful life i mean sounds sounds oh, yeah, great yeah. though it's an old, old, old movie. Seen, I guess I just, it's, it's uh, viewed as a Christmas movie, but I mean, it's much more than that. What? What? I, I just rewatched the, the first Harry Potter. Do you guys oh. watch those? I've seen I forgot it. how no. I forgot how good those were too. I watched the first one. I watched the first one. Yes. Yeah, you haven't seen any. Uh, what? You haven't seen any others? Uh, <laughs> I keep <laughs> black it out. No, have um, you seen any of the others? I haven't seen any. Of well, I don't think I've seen any of the other. I don't think. Maybe I. Ha I don't know. I never really. It's got so into it. good. Really. Yeah. Okay. I guess I'll get into it. I guess I'd be down to do a little marathon on that. I, you know, it's like the books. I read the first two, and yeah. there were elements that I liked, but I just it wasn't really for me. I just I felt that it was a little too modern for my taste. Like. I'm more of yeah. a C.S. Lewis, Chronicles of Narnia type of person. You know, I'm a total, I'm like a total The Hobbit. Like that was the first book <laughs> like I read as a kid that I remember. That's probably really? the only book I read as a kid. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Mm, so, but that and. Um, Were you into those movies then? Like when they made The Hobbit? No, movies? I wasn't. I just, I kind of was like, I kind of like if it's mm -hmm. on in the background, sometimes I put that stuff on to write like for noise in the background to get my head off of things I'm are floating through my head. But I don't know. It's something about the books though, like the maps and the, the, um, I don't know the whole fairy tale thing about anything that has fairy tale or witches or Fantastical stuff like that. Elements. Yeah. 
I just love all that stuff. But uh-huh. yeah, I, totally. some of the Harry Potter movies went Not too Joel dark Pat. for me. You know, I mean, they went to they got too modern for oh, me the Harry and stuff Potter like that. Ones, yeah, I totally understand really? what you're saying. But what, that what about first Game of Thrones? one, I started that. I think we talked about that, and I was like obsessed with Khaleesi. <laughs> oh, right. I was I like, I, that, right. and so I just stopped watching. <laughs> you, you, it wasn't, wait, you were it obsessed wasn't, with her, and then you were like, healthy. I have to, <laughs> I I have to end this. I, I had to break up with it. Yeah. It's too good. <laughs> me and her that have something very happened. special, and if I can I see could, you on this path, I can't see myself getting out. No, I totally, and I had to get out when I could. That's what happens. <laughs> respect, respect to that. Tom, like, what what have you watched recently? Have you watched any movies lately? Um, I did watch a couple. I mean, I'll just really briefly <laughs> mention these, and then we should probably get to a review. But okay. I, d- I did uh, uh, ten- <clears throat> Tenant, which is the new. Um, uh, oh my God, why am I? Uh, Christopher Christopher Nolan. Nolan? Christopher Nolan film, um, right. which came out earlier this year in theaters only, um, but finally it came out digitally, so I was able to watch that. It's it's out on mm-hmm. multiple platforms if you want to check it out. But it's his latest film. Um, I was really excited to check it out. I I'm I'm like off and on on Christopher Nolan. I absolutely love Memento. Mm-hmm. I have not liked a lot of his more recent stuff. I, I, I we we reviewed. Um, his most recent film before this, Dunkirk, on this podcast, and I think mm. we were both pretty mm. low on that. That was that was a big miss for me. Um, I like the Dark Knight. Kyrie. Like he's made some he's made some great stuff, oh, but then he's also I tried watching that recently. Dark Knight. Yeah. The the second Funny one with Heath Ledger. Yeah. You can you didn't watch like that. that. One? Mm-mm. Oh my I didn't god! It. It's just too gray. It looked like a PS2 game. <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh, and I also really like. What I would refer to as boring. What? Oh, I also really like yeah, Inception. I didn't, I didn't but, love that. Yeah, In fact, yeah, yeah. I hated it. No, I'm just. Kidding. I, I think Christopher I Nolan is just not for you. But if you're yeah, a fan of Christopher really Nolan, I feel like Tenet has a lot of of good in there, under a heavy layer of just like what you know, like it's just it's way more confusing than I think it really needs to be. It's like it, it's. I really feel like this time he might have just gone too far with all that shit. You know, like Inception, I feel like is confusing, but you can still grasp the the rules of it. This, I don't know if you know too much about it, but Tenant, it's it's about like this sort of reverse time thing, like this parallel universe of reverse time, and so like it results in these absolutely fucking incredible action sequences that like as long as as long as like you're just having some fun in games, these action sequences are insane and like practical effects too. Like he actually, it reminded me of like seeing Matrix Two or something like where the story is just nearly incomprehensible, but the action scenes are like holy shit. This is like really fun. So so everything I mean, was reversed. Everything it's like things are moving forwards and backwards depending on. I mean, I to get into it yeah. is like a whole nightmare. But <laughs> right. basically, it results in in shit that's like moving forwards and backwards. Like yeah, some people are like like cars are moving backwards while other cars are moving forwards, and like it just it's like it's just great. Like bullets are going back into guns rather than coming out of them. I mean, it just yeah, that's results, insane. It's yeah. really inventive, actually. Like, it, it mm-hmm. the result of it is, oh, oh, like fighting sequences too, where like people are like punching in reverse or like flipping someone backwards. I mean, it's cool. It's definitely got mm-hmm. like, a cool factor. But yeah, the, mm-hmm. the 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 story made the second half was like you've gone too far, Christopher Nolan. I I, I could not follow. Um, yeah. But but you know, I mean, if you want an action movie, this is certainly one that I cared far more about than most action movies. Just because yeah. it was like really uh, grounded, I felt like with with like practical effects, like there was not a ton of CG. Um, and I'm curious how yeah, good. How often? How many movies do you guys watch in a, in a month? Like how how many movies do you guys watch? A fair amount. <laughs> you do. Yeah. Dominic I, probably watches more than me lately, but like when we were doing our podcast every week, I was that was the most movies I would watch in a year in a, that. That year, I watched more movies than I had ever watched in one year. <laughs> wow, that's, but I was that's big, crazy. I mean, I've always been into movies, like yeah. But I kind of lost, you know, I wasn't as on top of what the newest stuff coming out was, like you know, for a while. And Dominic really kind of 
kept me on top of that in these last yeah. few years. But um, but you know, like once I hit my late teens, I was really into movies. Like I would just watch movies nonstop. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, there's so many movies I still haven't seen and probably you know should have seen by now. And I feel That's like I, I still feel. don't know. I still don't know. You know some like criterion stuff as they would as some would say right like critical too. critical like you know critical classics that i probably should have seen by now i haven't seen but like i, I have seen a fair amount you know and yeah i don't yeah. know speaking of critical darlings i mean we should okay. probably get to uh <laughs> this this film this film that we're going to okay. talk about yeah uh but right. one last thing for my brother he wants to know if this if those were ritz ritz crisp they are and they are <laughs> damn good <laughs> they're damn oh, vinegar good. flavor this is what I put on. If I ever have like the option to get a writer, you know, like fulfilled at a show, I put these <laughs> yeah. on it. I have I say, seen get them us, backstage. Give us the. Uh, this is what I get. I get crisp, Ritz, crisp and thin salt and vinegar, red vines, veggie plate, champagne, crisp, crystal, veggie plate, crystal, <laughs> and uh, you know whatever else for the boys. I still have our crystal <laughs> bottle back here. Can you see? Uh, yeah, we did a 100th episode. Last, was it just last year? It, will, it was the beginning oh. of this and, year. Oh my which god! Is you crazy. did a hundred, a hundred episodes of this. Yeah. So far? Well, you're on no, 108 right more. now. Oh, <laughs> oh my god, it's great. I mean, we took a pretty big break in the beginning of the year. True. Wow. It still feels like we've done more than that, but okay. That's a huge accomplishment. Yeah, for our 100th, well, for our 100th episode, we celebrated by getting a bottle of Cristal and all tasting it on the air. And how was everything? it? It was okay. Yeah. It's just <laughs> it's better. I've had way You've better. had? You oh, have. my God. I've had, like, yeah. insanely better, I have to yeah. say. But we did get the bottom of the line crystal, so maybe the top <laughs> Oh, there's, a, like, there's, like, a bottom Oh, my God. The there's, like, there's like $500,000 bottles, I think, out there. There is? But I think our bottle point... was, like, our bottle was, like, $300 or something like that. Yeah, which is wow. already, it's, I mean, God, I mean, it was, like, like ridiculous. Nearly, that's, like, kind of embarrassing. It was our gift, it was our gift to yeah. our, like, we had some, like, recurring guests on the show that, we just invited them over and we all had a little party and like mm-hmm. that was one of the last eight chips. One of the last parties, really. That was the last. Well, no, the last party for us was the our video release show. Well, we had a little party here when we released our right, music right, video right. for our favorite things. That was the last time. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, that was the last party I was at. I don't know about you. When was well, that? That was in February. Oh, we should. We gotta. We gotta get to the movie. Okay. That's sure. what Dominic's gonna that's say. That's what Dominic's yeah. saying with his you eyes. That's what he's saying. <laughs> you, saw the, you saw the glimmer in my eye, and you're like, "He wants to get to the movie. We gotta do this." This is Only Dominic because... being like, "This is Dominic <laughs> being like, uh, like wanting things to move, move on." Mm-hmm. No, uh, not... yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. It's a good impression. That's what I do. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah. Look at, so look at... anyway, that's great. Let's. So the next thing we're gonna talk about is. Someone's gotta do movie. it, okay? <laughs> no, Someone's gotta right. whip you're this right. shit into you're shape. Right. <laughs> um. <laughs> And I'm only I'm only trying to move us on because I don't want to run out of time. I hear you. We'll probably I want wrap you to how, much, how much time I is it? I like this? that you move us along. We need to get moved along up in here. Up in here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we'll wrap up in about thirty minutes. So um, if you haven't wow. seen Mank, uh, we're gonna we're gonna talk about this new movie. Uh, it's out on Netflix. Uh, stars Gary Oldman. It's a David Fincher film. David Fincher has made tons of uh, pretty memorable films of the last uh, fifteen or so years. Um, Fight Club, um, oh my god, why am I forgetting everything? The Zodiac, um, uh, the game. Benjamin Button, uh, uh, Social Network, Social Network, didn't know Seven. any of this. Wow, Seven, Seven. Um, wow. Yes. More recently, Gone Girl, The Girl with the Dragon oh, Tattoo. Yeah, Gone Girl. Oh, wow, yeah, I mean the list goes on. Right, he, list he's made some. On. He's made some notable films. Oh, and he also was the showrunner for. Um, Mindhunter on, on Netflix, if, if anyone had, has seen that. that. Wow. Seen but he's, this what is actually it? the longest break from movies that he has taken. Um, his previous film was Gone Girl, and I believe that was, I'm going to get the year, I think it was 2015, I want to say. Uh, and he normally puts movies out at a pretty frequent pace. Uh, 2014 was Gone Girl. So this this is a, a breaking wow. a six-year gap, which he's never done before. Usually, I would say, like, every three years, they're getting a new David Fincher film. So he's back with Mank. Uh, it's out on Netflix. If you haven't seen it, um, we're not going to spoil anything for the for the first part of our review. We're just going to kind of talk about our impressions, what we thought of it, um, without discussing too much of the story. And then after a certain point, we'll make it very clear that we're going to discuss the story, so you can choose to either keep listening or tune out at that point. 
but uh, Mank is a 2020 American biographical drama. Biographical drama. Biographical. biographical? <laughs> it's biography. I felt the movie was absolutely biographical. Biographical. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, so stunningly biographical tonight. It's a biographical uh, uh, drama it's a- about about screenwriter um, Herman J. Mankiewicz. Uh, and he was the writer for Citizen Kane, which um, is a 1941 film direct, uh, uh, directed by Orson Welles. Yeah, directed by Orson Welles. So this movie mm-hmm. is about the writer of that film, who I think most people wouldn't necessarily know him more than they would Orson Welles. Uh, Orson Welles tends to get more credit for Citizen Kane. Citizen Kane, if you don't know, um, is often seen by many critics... Um, as the greatest film ever made. That's kind of historically what people have called it's it. It's like I'm what they teach that. you in film class. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It it's, is? Yeah. yeah. It's like very You're, much I knew the... none of that. Oh. oh yeah. yeah. Well, I took a film 101 class in college, so I know that. You're getting well, crazy. It's just seen right as now. like one of the most important movies in film history. It kind of what? is. What? Really, I think. It's like a progressive movie towards time and like really just breaking a lot of not boundaries, but really, yeah, just being progressive and being really well thought out and just interesting. And I don't know. I think, wow. I think it for its time, the, <laughs> the biggest time. shift I would say that could have, Citizen Kane took from previous films of that era is that it was kind of just like glitz and glamour, like fun, fun and games, like seeing King Kong. Wow. How cool. It, it was more like, it was more just like roller coaster rides at the movies. And then right. Citizen Kane, I feel like was, was your kind of first, um, major film that was like you know uh, it, it 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 was not chronological it kind of asked more of the audience than to just kind of kick back relax and eat your popcorn you know it, it's, mm-hmm. it's more of like a serious film about life you know mm-hmm. so it, it, it just was also has... shot in a really interesting like it was shot in a very expressionistic kind of way i guess and it was probably well, different than a lot of the i, don't I feel know. i feel like mank was shot and because i had to go back I didn't know anything about Citizen Kane. Like I said, I, I'm very behind on movies and understanding all that stuff. So when I first watched it, I had to like research on what Citizen Kane was like and everything because I didn't know anything. And then when I saw clips of Citizen Kane, there was a lot of footage that resembled mm-hmm. how they shot the film oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, to be like that in a way, I guess. Right. Very yeah. much so. This film... Yeah very much mimics a 30s aesthetic in mm-hmm. like obs- obsessively i would say and yeah. and obsessive is a word i would use for uh, david fincher in general he tends to make very obsessive films about his subjects the zodiac killer is a notorious film of um or i mean zodiac the film about the zodiac killer is a notoriously mm-hmm. accurate film like he went to great lengths to basically like recreate the the scenes as precisely like he <laughs> I, I tell this story to a lot of my friends but he flew in trees um that what? were no longer there at the crime wow. scene he like helicoptered in trees and planted them where they used to be at the time so that like it was accurate to even where the trees were placed for the for that the, is yeah that's amazing so he he is a director who is obsessed with details um and this film is very much like we're gonna make a film in 2020 that is basically using (laughs) um techniques that they used in in the 30s um right so yeah so mank you can watch on netflix check it out if you haven't seen it uh but i'd love to hear what you what uh what you guys thought of it and we like to start with our guest here so kramis what did you what were your overall impressions of mank so again i I don't know the history. I didn't know the history. So I'm coming from it as a, uh, like, totally, like, this is just a movie. The first time I watched it, I, I got lost because the first the, time you watched it more than once. I did. And get wow. this, because my, my wife, like, That's goes commitment. shopping Thank and she you. loves this <laughs> area in Target that you could buy everything for a dollar. So she gets me these little notepads that I never use. And I filled this notepad with mank notes oh my oh god, my god. Serious, but i didn't know if we were wow. allowed to talk about thank it thank you wrote, that is very good we should have told <laughs> so you this anyway, is an amateur hour kind know, of thing i didn't know so of... I, I i used the witch one wow anyway nice i i the it, the talking was so quick the sarcasm is so quick like the one-liners 
mm-hmm. that I have I had trouble following it. But then the second time through, I was able to piece everything together. It totally made sense, and I ended up loving it by the end of it. Really? And I was obsessed with Young Frankenstein. That was like one of my favorite movies back when I was younger. I love that. And it, movie. the the black and white, anything black and white like that, totally just draws me in. So I thought it was really good. I thought it made a lot of sense the second time through, and it touched on so many different um, quickly, like it touched on so many different emotions quickly, almost like everything was, Oh, my phone's going to die. Uh-oh. Hang on a second. That okay. sucks. Hang on. Okay. But anyways, I'm going to plug this in. Yeah. You guys talk next. Yeah. Laura, why, don't, why don't we go to you then? Um, while, while Kramis plugs in his phone. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. I definitely felt that it was a lot of information that was like spoken and not shown for the mm-hmm. whole like first ha- you know first long while of the movie and I miss a lot of the information that was being conveyed like even just characters names like I'm like who's that guy again and what is his role and what is blah 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 and why do I care <laughs> mm-hmm. and honestly I did feel that it was just a subject that I wasn't that interested in in general but like i wanted to like it okay so then it got to a point in the movie where um you know it was well i want i don't want to this is not a spoiler but the movie deals with like a political backdrop during the time that um mankiewicz is like involved in well he works for mgm or whatever Mm -hmm. and like he's a writer for them this is like before he wrote citizen kane and so during this time it was like after the great depression had basically just ended and officially ended or whatever and like they there was going to be a new election in california for a new governor Mm -hmm. and it was like this republican um against this uh you know so this guy who was like deemed a socialist um uh what's his name Oh, the people running? running? Man, I could not tell you. But um, I'll look it up while you're talking. But anyway, like, and so at that point, I was like, all right, I need to, like, look this shit up because I need to know who these people are, who are they're talking about, because yeah. I was not qu- completely sure. So I actually did look at, like, the cast of characters that were all involved in, like, the real life version of this movie. Mm-hmm. And once I did that, I felt, like, a little more invested in the movie because it was actually kind of interesting in terms of the real life story. But then... If I were to judge this just on the movie alone and not being able to, like, look up the Internet and figure out what's going on a little bit, I would have just been like, this is the most boring movie I've ever seen. (laughs) But, like, and I like David Fincher's movies a lot, you know, usually. Like, I love, you know, I love Seven. I love The Social Network. I loved um, Fight Fight Club and, like, all these. And Girl with Dragon Tattoo is pretty good. But it's no surprise. I mean, it is. It's it, it really explained a lot which i didn't know when i read in the, the notes for our totally tell me episode that you that you wrote out on, a, on our google doc uh spreadsheet that uh not spreadsheet but whatever saying that um his dad is the one who actually wrote the screenplay here mm-hmm. not david Fincher. so that's a really interesting i mean that makes a lot more sense as to why this is totally kind of like a different style of, of subject matter and, and film than the usual david Fincher type things. Also thought it was interesting that he decided, I mean, it's not that interesting, but like the fact that Atticus Ross and Trent Reznor scored this movie, well, it's not surprising because, you know, they did the, like a lot of his movies in the past they, and I love their, their music. Yeah. They've been working with him, but like, since like his last five films, they, they, but like they aesthetically as a, dis- as a choice to go with them for this movie, it just was like so wrong. <laughs> not that they did a bad job. I mean, it was fine, I guess, but like, it was just so, outside of what you would expect to hear from like a Trent Reznor, Atticus Ross, um, you know, production. But still, that was well, But it sounded nothing like them. I mean... No, it sounded nothing like them yeah. at all. But it was also like not very remarkable music in my opinion. I was just kind of like, mm. okay, it like it fits the movie, but it's not like amazing or remem- like memorable in any way, you know, and it, for me. Mm. And I don't want to talk shit because I, I do like this director and I like a lot of the people involved in the movie, but like I just didn't... I just, as a subject, this is just not for me. Like, I just don't really care that much about <laughs> what went into the, like, the inspiration for, you know, Citizen Kane as a movie. I mean, it's, I watched the movie, I've seen the movie Citizen Kane years and years ago, and I remember thinking it was, like, in, kind of interesting, but 
boy, oh boy, oh boy, was that a lot of t dialogue and like not really fun th things to look at, <laughs> which I really want to have when I'm watching a movie. I like to look at it. I could, some people would say this was visually amazing, but like for me, I just, I need more action. You know what I mean? I need less talk, more action. You know what I mean? And this was there all was about talk. talk. It was just like so much information that was like t kind of tedious, like businessy information that was not fun. <laughs> you know mm. what I mean? And so I just was like, whatever. This uh, this is a homework assignment right now. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> was how I felt about it. And it's funny that you said that you took a freaking entire notebook full of notes because it really was a homework <laughs> assignment for all. Of, I feel like you watched I it watched twice it to twice. try to understand. Can you guys it. hear me still? Yeah. yeah. So I'm okay. not fully, I'm not that surprised, but then again, I, I'm, I do want to know what Dominic thought because, well, it seems yeah. like you agree with me, but maybe not. Um, Dominic, what'd you think? Yeah. I, I mean, <clears throat> man, I love David Fincher. <laughs> I'm usually very interested <laughs> in what, in what he does. I Honestly, I mean, even his worst movies to me are very engaging, you know, oh, like the game I'll say also, I love the game. The game is actually the one I haven't seen. I've seen all of his movies, but that. I mean, I didn't love it, but I liked it. It was fun and very entertaining. I'm, I'm going to go back and, and watch that for sure. Um, yeah, but yeah, I, I love him as a director. And this is, yeah, I mean, oh, and I do want to correct one thing that you said, Laura. He actually never writes his own his own films. He always just Oh, he directs. doesn't? Oops. Okay, um, never mind. I don't but, know. But, but I do think. this was like an obligatory thing because it was like his dad or whatever. So he probably like didn't choose this project, mm -hmm. you know? But I kind like, of feel a similar way when I, when I found out that information because I didn't know until after I watched it as well. When I found out that his father wrote it and that this was originally, he was going to make this in the 90s, but the project mm -hmm. fell through because he didn't have the proper funding or whatever. Basically, I think it was probably because he wasn't, he hadn't established himself as like this director that could just make his passion project yet. Um, and now he's very established. He can make whatever he wants. Um, and so I think this is more, this reads to me like David Fincher doing this thing that he's just always wanted to do in his life and more power to you, D David Fincher. But like, this is, this is a lot. <laughs> this is a lot to take in. Um, I found myself very lost. Um, I, I have like some, okay. I, I watched this in Kane. I mean, I feel very similar to you. I think, uh, Laura, I watched this in Kane a long time ago. And even when I watched that, it kind of felt more like a homework assignment in my opinion. Um, it's, <laughs> it's like interesting for film history and it's mm. interesting for like what it accomplished for its time, but it's, I don't really think it's like the greatest film ever. And it's not like a film that personally speaks to me. So it's not like this film that I'm just dying to see like more about the making of necessarily, you know, like there are certain films in film history that also I connect with deeply, like the shining, I feel like is, you know, revolutionary for horror movies, but it's also, it interests me deeply. And so if this film was about like the behind the scenes drama of the shining, I'd probably be like, so into it even if there was no action like right. i'd just be it's like just wow not... this is yeah. so i can't believe kubrick did 200 takes crazy but like <laughs> this but this is about a film that like i just don't have the passion for and i think it's if you don't have that passion for citizen kane it's hard to get passionate about a film about citizen kane you know exactly um well, it's not just about that, though. It's no, definitely no. about, like, what was going on at the time and sort of just the history of, like, I think it's really a story about a guy who was taking on these giant mogul, like, these movie industry moguls as, mm -hmm. like, a little, like, a mm -hmm. relatively smaller man who was, like, following his dream or whatever and, like, not succumbing to the temptations of, you know, of money and power and whatever. No, you're, you're totally right, but I guess the business aspect and also prevailing wasn't interesting to in me. a like, weird way right i mean me neither you guys you guys make me should we go through my 11 pages of notes I'm, I'm actually <laughs> very, honestly i'm very excited that you no, have a different opinion because it's always a better i i actually don't my phone is gonna die i don't know what's happening so <laughs> oh, no. and when, when i unplug my headphones i could barely hear you guys oh so no. here's the deal here's the okay. deal i'm gonna i'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna plug it back in, and I'm gonna read my ridiculous, un, oh, un my stupid, stupid notes that make no sense. Not. Perfect. I'll kick back with my screwdriver and let you take it away. Bear, bear with me. 
this is this is how this is okay can you guys hear me yeah yeah totally can you hear me okay i'm sorry i have no idea what's wrong with my phone but it was a hundred percent but listen that's the way showbiz goes right good showbiz baby this is the kind of notes i took booze literally <laughs> it says boo booze oh booze right there was a lot of booze and then yeah. All my notes say is 60 days in a noodle. These were all the quotes that I heard that I wrote down that were moving so fast that I couldn't keep track. But I will say, I will say there was things that I did like, like one thing that really bothered me, like, oh, am I allowed to do this? Am I like giving too many oh, details? Well, hold on. Are we going to, are you going to get into spoilers? I don't know. Am I? Are you are you going to say stuff that's like a spoiler to people who haven't seen the movie? Yeah, it might be. But I do have we one can... quote that I love the most. OK, can... go ahead. You yeah. can and that's all I want to say. Yeah. yeah. It is. You can say everything. Don't, it, we... it literally is. Um, it says, don't worry, have a pickle. That's. <laughs> <laughs> that's where I'm at with the movie. Don't worry. That's what. <laughs> that's the stuff I liked about the movie. But I really don't know the history of Citizen Kane or anything like that. Like I'm not like I wasn't. I kind of. Well, you do now. Under... Now that you've seen this movie. <laughs> yeah. Now. Now. Basically, is it's all Citizen Kane is basically all of the major players in this movie put into the form of Citizen Kane. So Citizen Kane is based on William Randolph Hearst, who's, mm -hmm. you know that mansion yeah. that they have a part like that they go to the parties at and stuff and like mm -hmm. he's the one who's basically married to amanda seafried's character the blonde and he's like basically yeah, the hardcore it. like media guy at the time like he owns all these publications and he was like a really successful totally. businessman yeah and so he has like he's like a powerful guy and i don't know he's like best friends with all these other people like the head of mgm and like that producer guy who yeah. Buys. Well, anyway, do you want to get into spoilers? Um, we, so we announced that we're going to do spoilers and then we can say whatever we want. <laughs> yeah, let's get into spoilers. Okay. Um, if you if you haven't seen Mank, um, you can choose to keep watching, but we are going to uh, discuss the story in depth. So feel free to tune out if you'd like. Um, but yeah, I'll put up our spo spoiler warning now. Um, yeah, so, so now we're free to just talk about anything in in the film that that strikes you um who wants to who wants to okay. i didn't i hated that one part uh where the kid would not stop talking about the uh letter he got and that's how the car crash happened and oh. when mank was being lifted up into the ambulance and the guy was still talking about the girl in the letter i could have turned it off right then <laughs> I was actually going to go back and watch that part again because I was wondering who was it that was actually driving him in that scene because I forgot. After, I have no idea. Know. I didn't even know who it was. I'm wondering if it was like one of the people that was, you know, an important figure later on in the movie. Like, was it his brother or was it, I don't know. I don't think that person came back, did he? Okay. No, I, I I was, that's what I was wondering. I was going to go back and just yeah. be like, hmm, not that I care. Yeah, this film is, <laughs> no. this film, it's, it's just incredibly dense with information I mean, and people and again, like, I think it goes back to David Fincher's obsession with accuracy. Like, I bet this yeah. film is extremely accurate. But accuracy, I think this is unfortunately a time where accuracy just doesn't mean uh, excitement, you know? And, and I'm not saying yeah. I need a film to be exciting for it to be interesting. Like, there were plenty of interesting things about this movie. But I, I was just desperately wishing that it was going to focus more on, like, I don't know, creative drive or, like, the conflict between director and writer or like there was a lot of other ways that I thought that this was maybe going to start going that were more interesting to me. Like one of the final scenes was finally something that I was like dying for the whole movie, which is just, he didn't get full credit. So I wanted to know like, what's up with that, you know? And yeah, when, that, when he finally is, con uh, when him and Orson Welles confront each other in one of those final sequences in the film, I feel like that's kind of the drama that I was more interested in was, okay, this guy, you know, he's poured his heart and soul into this, into this piece. And then, you know, he's handing it off to a director and it's kind of interesting too, in a meta way, because David Fincher often doesn't write his own films. 
So I was kind of like, wow, this is going to be really interesting to see a movie directed by somebody but written by somebody else about a writer who writes something for another director, you know? Yeah, but, but why wouldn't like his dad that wrote, but it's his dad that wrote it. <laughs> no, but he but often why... doesn't direct his own like films that he wrote. I, I don't know. I just No, I know. I know. Yeah. What was that whole thing? Why was Orson so mad about giving credit? What was that whole thing? Why why was credit not going to be given in the first place? Ego. Well, oh, actually, no shit. No, I didn't no. know. I thought it was something else. I thought it was something. I mean, that's like. Well, I mean, I think there's plenty of ways you can interpret it, right? But it, well, to or, me, didn't Orson but, Welles say that he like, well, Orson Welles like edited it, basically. So he was going to take right? all the credit for the didn't whole he, thing. No, no, he wasn't going to take a hundred. I don't think so. They, right? they shared writing credit in the end. So they did. The share, no, but that was after that was after Mank or whatever, like refused his offer of like basically in on whatever Orson yeah. Welles was trying to offer him at the end. I don't remember what it was when he came over to his house and he was like, he was getting a full no salary. Huh? Yeah. So he was, he was going get... to get a, uh, the, as per the contract that he signed, yeah. he was to receive no writing credit. There just wouldn't right. be a writer. On film. Oh. It was just going to be like, uh, you know, but I guess Welles, that was, no writing. So that, credit. no. So that was like the original contract he went into before he even wrote it. So yes. that's the thing, though. The thing is, I guess that is a deal that people do a lot of times is like writers will get hired for a piece and that they're not necessarily guaranteed or granted credit. They're just going to get paid a flat fee or whatever. And then that's, that's right. It. Yeah, but not yeah. much. these And days. like, I mean, mm-hmm. oh, my God. Yes, do. it definitely. Ha- well, it happens with like comedy all the time. Like ghost writers get hired and they just don't get credit. You know, they're getting they're getting hired to write stuff for comedians to deliver. And then like nobody knows who wrote it, you know. Nobody sure, knows but about I, the I, writer. Think that, I think at that time, though, I guess, a writer and a director weren't like it wasn't really a thing that the mass public understood the fact that like mm-hmm. people that were, were writing it and things. people uh-huh. were directing it. You know, it was kind of just like this new film from Orson Welles. And honestly, yeah. frankly, even now. It's, oh, well, that's it's, what I thought. I yeah. never knew that. I was like, who is this Mankiewicz? Did he like because totally. when I was watching the movie, I was like, well, I thought Orson Welles wrote. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. That, like that's what I, I was too. thinking the whole time. So I was like, "What did Mankiewicz do, or what was his point?" You know. And then finally, by the end of the movie, I was like, "Oh, I guess that was the point." But at the same time, um, well, I don't know. <laughs> I th- I think I think the whole thing, like that whole that whole bit about the whole credit thing, was like the just the the hardest part to like. That was just like the. That was like what the whole movie was about. The whole movie seemed to be about revenge. When you got to the point where, I forget everyone's names, the the really rich evil guy uh, with the sunken, yeah, Hearst. Wait, you mean when the it, one who, with the glasses or the other guy? No, like, the, the one with the Tywin, glasses. Tywin Lannister. The, yeah, he, when he was walking. The one, from, the, one from, the one from Game of Thrones? Or did you recognize the guy from Game of Thrones? The uh, older man. Uh, well, he's the one who owned was? the mansion. Yeah. yeah, that guy. So he, when he was walking the, um, when he was walking Mank out and. Oh, yeah. No, that was, yeah, that was that. The Oregon Grinder. The, like the Alan, yeah, the, yeah, the analogy of the Oregon That's Grindr. when I realized this whole thing was about Mank writing for revenge. That I feel like that's what he was doing. You know what I mean? Like he, that whole thing was about, that whole story was about him and it was kind of revengeful. I don't know if I'm wrong about that, but. It seemed like that's what he was doing, and that's why I thought he didn't want credit because he just wanted to get back at that guy. Because that was a flashback, wasn't it? I, those were all flashbacks, but I don't. I mean, just to chime in, I don't think it was about revenge. I think it was general. Well, trying, or I think it was like poised to be about a guy who w- wanted to do right and like expose the really unfair, like gap between the rich and the poor basically i mean they're coming out of the great depression so there's all these people who are like impoverished and then there's these like one percent people who are extremely wealthy and rich they have yeah. the power and they're like telling the story here because it was like that the backdrop of this election happening where you have like that so it was um upton sinclair was the the, the democrat or the socialist nominee yeah. and then there was frank merriam who all these MGM guys or like these rich, guys, wealthy people, they were basically creating propaganda movie movies or commercials or whatever that were like lies, basically, 
um, yeah. to get that help get that guy elected. And yeah. that was not going to help the people who had like lost their, you know, homes and money and things like that. Those people needed help and they needed somebody like the Sinclair guy or whatever. But these rich mogul guys were like actively, you know, supporting the Republican Party. And it was, I yeah. guess, what I, from what I gather, it was like ironic because they were in, they were seen in, in the earlier part of the movie talking about, you know, Hitler and how he was like. I remember that. Yeah. In Germany and like they didn't like him and that he was like anti-Semitic and stuff and that he was not somebody they liked, but that they also felt concerned, but that they didn't want to uh, take it too seriously or things like that. And yeah. I don't know. But basically, Mank was not like them he want they wanted him to support their whole propaganda campaign but he wasn't he wasn't a part of it yeah he didn't he was like refusing to be part of it and then he was starting to see like all these people for what they were which was like money hungry power hungry just dicks basically who didn't give a fuck about anybody and that they were cold and that's what citizen kane was about was it's about a guy who like is corrupted by power and wealth Mm-hmm. And he, as you know, his character is tempted by it and offered all these opportunities to just like join the club. And he turns it all down and including like with this whole movie. I mean, he did want the recognition for writing it, but like he basically never did succumb to all that. And instead, he decided to tell the story of what was going on, mm-hmm. maybe as like not as a form of vengeance, but I think as a form of activism, really. You know what I mean? Activism. Way, yeah. Like, and all those guys were trying to, like, stop it from happening. You know, like, none of them, they knew about the script, and they knew that it was, like, a direct slam against, like, the wealthy elite in their whole industry. And they were actively, like, really trying really hard to stop it from happening. All of them were. Like, they were just... Stopping the story. Was, stopping Citizen stopping, Kane. Stopping, yeah. stopping Citizen Kane from getting made. Like, all mm-hmm. these people were just, like, but when really they, they talked that about... it was going to be a bad look for them. You know what I mean? Yeah, and, uh, but when they talked about because... like, mm-hmm. go ahead, go ahead. Well, he was their he was like their friend or whatever, but then he felt that it was important to tell the truth, you know, about what right. the dynamic was about their whole scene and stuff. I guess I yeah. look. I'm that's why my, like, <laughs> my no, that's totally. That's I got. Here. I totally. I got all that, and like in the very beginning, one of his first quotes was that guy said, um, uh, "Write the story, you know." Like yeah. he said, and then right. he said, I, I've never known that writer or something like that. That mm-hmm. was a, one of the first sarcasm, sarcastic quotes. And like, I, and like everything you just explained to me, it did not, it makes total sense now. But when right. they were saying like, when they were saying like, is he going to tell her like that, like Marion Davis, that Marion Davis character, I feel like he was like, taking characters from that and putting it into citizen kane he was he directly was, yeah. all of those so, people okay, were yeah. like i said citizen kane is based on that hearst her husband yeah and okay, she's that, like yeah and there's a character in citizen kane who i don't know, know their name but, but they, see, they made a joke about it that's rosebud rosebud is like the sled or whatever yeah, oh yeah it's, it's all, kind of the big yeah. turning kane. point but yeah. um but no, there she does have a character in in Citizen Kane that's directly based on her, and she she says that she doesn't care or whatever. Okay. Oh, I but I think kinda, that her true character was hints. revealed when she like turns down his, like he basically was begging her to, what was it? Oh, to basically tell W. R. Hearst, her husband, like to please stop, put a stop to these propaganda commercials that are basically going to lead to that Upton Sinclair nominee to losing, basically. Which is, a lot of it, I think, it's pretty relevant with, you know, today in terms of, like, Trump being president and how he, like, basically spews out lies and people believe it. And there's that whole scene in the movie where they're like, oh, basically, as long as you tell people enough lies on repeat or whatever, they can, they're starting, they're, they start to believe you. And, like, the MGM people are, are like, Oh, see, you just need to tell people the right amount of truth and then they'll get on board, like thinking that they were telling truth to the people who were voting for their Republican nominee, the Merriam, Frank Merriam or whatever, when really they were making these lying, like fake propaganda videos with people that Mankiewicz knew. He was like, oh, he heard the commercial of that woman was like, you know, I want to vote for up Merriam because I've lost almost everything. All I have is my little house and. It's all I've got, and I'm, I'm really poor, blah, 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 trying to act like they were these humble people. 
And then him and his wife are listening to it going, that I know that voice. That's this woman, and she's got millions of dollars. She's, like, richer than mm -hmm. shit, you know? And yeah, she has enough money actors. to buy us both, like, beach houses or whatever. Yeah. So basically they're going, wow, they're basically creating lies and mm -hmm. helping this guy win through making lying, you know, propaganda commercials. And that was, like, how he felt he knew that he was that that Upton Sinclair didn't have a chance of winning. Mm -hmm. And um I forgot where I was going with that, but uh so yeah, it's he uh I don't I know. Think, what was the question? I think that's a pretty <laughs> accurate read on 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 what was going on for sure, like what the themes are of this movie. Oh sorry. He he appealed to um Herbst's why sorry, her Hurst is Hurst's <laughs> Hurst's wife. W Marion. Marion. <laughs> <laughs> the blonde he yeah. asked her in the car remember he's like could you please please go back and and like tell him not to air these videos or what or air these commercials and she's like oh i can't i just can't and he goes why and she's like well it's my exit and basically yeah. like her status is more important basically he realizes that she's not like actually down for whatever thinking i think that this is my guess but it's, he felt that he had a kinship with her right in the beginning yeah, and like he they, they the had a kind of side eye but and she, it wasn't and she that it wasn't less... real it was it's just, it was just that he saw that she really is one of them or she just cares about she doesn't really care about like the people or helping people or you know what i mean she's she's like i can't do this because i just made my exit and i am not going back mm -hmm. or whatever the hell that meant i don't know but that's i my, also feel like in that's the what final that scene that they have together where she was saying like so she wasn't forgive me if forget uh forgive oh, yeah. me if it gets made or whatever because then, i mean she's more or less hinting like that she's, she's like, forgive not forgive me now. if it doesn't get made yeah yeah mm -hmm. like she, she's trying she to goes back to talk to him to not get the movie made right. not get citizen kane made but she's acting like i don't care about how you portray me it's more that like don't do this to my Damn. husband when he's down or whatever yeah right yeah, yeah. Um, but i think none of them wanted it to get made they were all just like you know, it was seen as a big, you know, embarrassment maybe but for them. It did get made. Because I don't think that the public, well, I'm just surprised that they would care that much when it's like a fictionalized movie. You know what I mean? It's with like all these people whose their fictional characters, you know, their names are not mm -hmm. being revealed in the movie. So I don't know why they care that much. Well, it's so crazy that that is, uh, they, they knew that anyone that saw that film Oh my God! This is kill me. Would know that, like, oh, there's the, yeah. Like a, it's, it's so like crazy how small the, the world is. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Just like the if, dynamic if you guys, of power. If you guys lose me, it's because my phone went out, and I'm oh, okay. so sorry. That's the worst. <laughs> so it's we'll, the worst. We're gonna wrap up soon, anyways. So if you okay. if you fall sorry. off, we'll make sure we'll make sure people I'll, know. <laughs> I said what bye. <laughs> yeah, you said bye. I'll, I'll, I'll do my best impression of you saying bye. Um, you can just you, hold that mic up and say it's me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Kramis is here, everybody. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah, I feel like a big failing of the movie for me, though, is is while the story is there, I mean, it's, it's, it's moderately interesting, but it just it doesn't really give you enough context to care just by seeing this movie. Like to, I think to really be invested, you have to have prior knowledge of this or have like a deep interest in Citizen Kane. Cause I just feel like they don't give you enough reason to be invested. You know, that's yeah. why I watched it twice. And that's why I thought, <laughs> that's why I thought I was doing, if I knew you guys felt like this, I would have watched half of it probably <laughs> and just like talked about the but i was so dedicated no, you don't have I was, to like, love a movie i, like, I mean you know yeah, i know but i was like these guys are gonna know this in and out i don't know anything about citizen kane no, and I, a, I was like i don't either i don't know well that's so good to know no i feel way. so good about that yeah <laughs> <laughs> I do. Well, I'm, you fucking I feel idiots a little don't guilt. know shit. I feel a little bit guilty that you wrote all those notes, but no, no. If time, you I think seriously, it's awesome. seriously, don't worry. I'm have a pickle. Come an on. honor. That's not a note. No, it's I mean just it's a great. Big scribble. Yeah. No, good. <laughs> Look, people do oh. take notes though on this show. Like Dylan, mm -hmm. a, a frequent guest that, that has been on Totally Tell Me, he takes a lot of notes. <laughs> he does. You know? <laughs> and uh, um, you know, other people take notes. I take notes on occasion. Dominic does too, but yeah. 
Uh, one last thing I well, wanted yeah. to bring up, though, that we haven't really talked, or you briefly mentioned, Laura, but I just wanted to shout it out, actually, because I loved the cinematography in this movie. That was, mm -hmm. like, the one <laughs> highlight for me. The thing that really kept me going when I was, like, losing it with the story was yeah. just how beautiful uh, and, and really accurate it felt, at least, um, to a 1930s aesthetic, like, I, I really, I, you actually called it out as I think maybe maybe a, a boring scene for you, Laura. But I really liked that party scene. No, I like the party scenes. Oh, okay. I, Those I, are the I only felt, scenes I felt were not boring. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, because <laughs> that had, like, that was cool really engaging. props and stuff. And <laughs> yeah, I was like, I want some of that champagne. I mean, that looks cool. <laughs> well, also, and me too. I was <laughs> noticing. I loved the champagne glasses that they were doing. I was like, oh my god, that is gorgeous. But that part where they were in the they're like having they're at the dining table at Hearst Castle, mm -hmm. it's like there's a they're mm -hmm. all dressed in like circus wear or whatever. Yeah. It was like a yeah. We Did break you notice the big the big fireplace in that scene? That, uh -huh. was, a ref, that was a Citizen Kane ref reference, I think. Oh, really? That, I mean... Because that's like one of the iconic shots in Citizen Kane. I I re that I remember is him standing next to this crazy fireplace that was like huge. And wow. Anyway. I, Point being, yeah, kind of boring. I did too. I, but... I, I like the 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 way it was shot and stuff. Again, I like black black and white because of Young Frankenstein. But I, mm -hmm. it's it was nothing really like that. But I, I um, I like the movie because I dedicated so much time to it. <laughs> it's like when you write an album yeah. and no one likes it, but you're like, no, I like it. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> you wrote it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Just you like wrote that. it. Exactly. Uh. <laughs> Another cool touch that I really liked was um, he simulated switching reels. This is like a really nerdy thing, but like. Oh, those I, little black circles in the right hand corner? Yeah, those are cigarettes. I know, burns. I noticed I that. I mean, they aren't real, but they put them in as like. Because that was a that's a thing that they used to do for film reels when reels were only like 12 to 18 minutes, a film reel, yeah. and then they had to switch to the next reel. So approximately every 18 minutes in this movie, they do like the, the switching of the reel. Obviously no one's switching a reel on Netflix, but like, it's, it's just, it's kind of like a fun little touch, I think for. Wait, so cigarette burns is how they switch reel or what is that about? So you'll see a cigarette burn. Usually I think it's like um, a minute before the reel has to switch or maybe 30 seconds or something like that. And then you see another one just like five seconds before the reel has to switch. So basically the first it? one is is for the projectionist to know, oh, I better get the second reel ready because it's about to uh... switch. And then the, the second one that you see is like, all right, time to hit the button because you got to switch that reel right now. So they so use cigarette burns as a cue. I didn't cue. notice that stuff. They appear always They're in so the... They're so fast. They would be like right here in the screen. Um, and they oh, just really? like for a second and then they go away and then it just almost before the real switch is like goes, something you would think you're not sure if you even saw it yeah but i'm surprised and that they had to, they, they would use that as a cue for the the projectionist because it seems like something that you could easily miss you know yeah but i guess that's their whole job is to just be watching for I that that's your, also that's i mean I, they, they have a timer too i'm sure like it's not like they're just totally just like waiting yeah. but they know like they know when they see that like they, they know based on their timer like oh, oh it's coming up the next 30 seconds Oh, little cat. Yeah. Um, but yeah. yeah. And ironically, I learned brutal. that from Fight Club because Fight Club explains that oh. in the movie. They talk about that. Um, and that was when I first heard about it. And then, you know, I learned more about it in, in film school. But I don't know. I, th I thought that was kind of like a funny little touch that he put in. Like they did a I lot to them. recreate. Even the to sound, too. Again. E even the sound, I... too, is like it's. it doesn't sound like a 2020 film. It sounds like a 1930s film like it, the the sound is very like compressed one and yeah like in, in very um mid-range like there's not these deep lows like you would normally get in a 2020 film mm. that i cannot believe that you picked all that up like just by watching it like that's amazing to me <laughs> that's I think really that cool stuff, I, I i really i don't know i'm kind of like nerd that's the stuff i'm nerdy about that's <laughs> Maybe cool not citizen though. kane but <laughs> right that's cool but there's, it's, this is certainly like a movie for nerds, and you have to really, <laughs> you have to like really be a like. Oh my I'm god, though nerd, I was, but, I was yeah. reading that like it may be nominated for best picture. Mm. I'm just like, I don't problem? feel like that should happen. I mean, this um. is not. I mean, it's well made in a certain kind of way, but then it's like not a movie you would want to watch. <laughs> 
I mean, isn't that the Academy Awards, though? I guess. No, I mean, I don't know. I've come to see the Academy Awards as like just cheesy mainstream movies that are not movies I like, but that people watch because they're like, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, they throw in, a, they, they like throw a bone or two, but usually I feel like they're the the nominations are are movies like this that are pretty like they're what about was Hollywood. It? What was last year? What was last year's? Uh, last year's Best Picture. Yeah. Star is Born. Oh god! No, was like, see, that <laughs> like, was that nominated? Probably. See, movies like that is what I'm talking about. I like, think it was for they're best. Not, yeah, they're not like silly. they're not like unwatchable. I mean, they're they're not movies I would watch. But I mean, I actually did watch that movie, but not because only because I had a screener for it. But no, I just that's not like the most boring movie ever. It's just it's not. I don't like it. Is what it comes down to. <laughs> Par- Parasite is what one, which is a rare. Oh, time Parasite. That, that's that a I actually movie. disagree. That one. Or uh, uh, that I actually do agree with. Wait, um, that one best picture. What was? Yeah. Oh my god! I was actually That's very excited about. that. I never even heard of it. Oh, oh it's, pretty, it's a pretty fun movie. Parasite is is great, it? Yeah. yeah, you should watch it. It's like on stuff for free. But I will say that is a rare time. <laughs> that is a rare time. That the Oscars, I feel like, actually picked a film that that I feel like a lot of. Well, just... it's more. It's got more of an indie vibe. Up oh, there, he goes. Oh. <laughs> I think we lost. Phone Chris. died. Yeah, uh, I Aww. think we just lost Kramis okay. for the audio listeners. There's um, our cue to get the hell out of here, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I was. I think we were pretty much wrapping it up, anyways. He yeah. may or may not join, and if he does, I'll I'll let him into the meeting. But um, oh, okay. I think you heard our thoughts on uh, <laughs> plenty of thoughts on Mink. So if you want to check it out, it's on Netflix right now. Um, so you know, take it or leave it, really. Um, yeah, so we're going to be back in two weeks with a new episode, and this is going to be actually a, a pretty exciting episode. Uh, we're going to do our top 10 movies of 2020, which I feel like will be, um, I feel like that, I feel like it's important in this year Just to, a- to talk about some good movies, because I feel like I hear a lot, like no movies came out in 2020. I was but... going to say, can you do a quick recap on what came out this year? Just <laughs> <laughs> ever mean... so quick. I mean, there's, there's off the top of your head, off the top of your head. Uh, okay, wait. Mank. I mean, Mank. Uh, Portrait of a Lady on Fire. That's true. <laughs> uh, that's all I can think of. <laughs> Here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go alphabetical in the in the list of oh, movies. <laughs> I was just okay. Or no, actually, I'll okay, go. Okay, okay, I'll go. A loaded question. Look, Borat. Oh, on Borat. the rocks. There you go. The devil all the time. I'm thinking of ending time. things. Bill and Ted, yep. Tenant, mm. She Dies Tomorrow, mm. Host, mm. The Invisible Man, mm. Horse Girl, Host. Palm Springs, Relic, Possessor, Never Rarely, Sometimes Always, Kajillionaire, Uncle Frank, His House, oh, Bad Education. Uh, these are all movies I've seen, yeah. <laughs> ah, Sound sure. of Metal, First Oh, wait, Cow, I, well, we watched Kajillionaire. What am I talking about? Yeah. Right. Swallow. What do you recommend? Uh, what do I recommend? I mean, I guess you got to tune I've in seen. in two weeks. Of the ones so. I haven't <laughs> seen. Oh, yeah, I guess you're right. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so we're going to talk our top ten films of 2020 on, on our next episode. So you should definitely tune in for that. That's going to be, I believe it's January 3rd. Yeah, January 3rd, uh, 7 p.m. So mark your calendars. That'll be an episode that's just going to be me and Laura, too. We won't have a guest for that one. Mm-hmm. Um, but there'll be plenty to talk about. So, anyways, thanks again for listening or watching. Totally tell me. Uh, we post new episodes every other Sunday. Well, we go live every other Sunday, and we post those episodes on podcast services the following Wednesday. So you can listen if you want um, or watch live. Um, oh, <laughs> my brother says shout out. <laughs> my brother says shout out to Fox Hills Brigade. Slave, best song yet. Sh- slap that shit daily. <laughs> <laughs> Heck yeah. That's what I like to hear. Laura Thank loves to you. hear that. <laughs> Thank you very much, Alex. My brother loves it. He's a big fan, Laura. Awesome. Um, Amazing. Thank you. Anyways, we will be back in two in two weeks with a new episode of Totally Tell Me. In the meantime, uh, well, uh, thank get... you to Kramis for having for being on today. Yeah. Even though he had to check out early, he says bye to everyone. I'm sure. Yeah, he says bye. Oh my God, he just he just asked to be uh, admitted, so we'll uh, let him say bye to his, his very self. We were uh, just he's sideways. It's fine. You can Whoa. There we go. Oh, there we go. Yes, hi. We, were, we, we truly just wrapped me? it up. 
Um, you did? But we're, we're still live, so if you wanted to say your one final goodbye. <laughs> hey, thanks for, thank you for having, that actually was a lot of fun for me. That's and that was fun. like, I like, I really like uh, hanging out with you guys. You guys make hey, me laugh. So you make that us was a, laugh. That was a good time. And I really, uh, uh, I really, I'm gonna, st I'm gonna mail you my notes, and then we can go over it again. <laughs> you can watch Sounds it a third time. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> All right, anyway, Kermit. thank you guys. Have thank a good you. one. Yeah, thanks uh -huh. for being on. All right, everybody, we will, we will be back in two weeks with a new episode. See ya. Bye.